Hello, I'm David Casey, a solutions engineer at Snap. Today we're going to go over how to create, install, and validate the Snap Pixel on your website. The Snap Pixel is a tool that Snapchat provides to measure a range of actions that tie directly back to your business goals. The Snap Pixel's key benefits are that it allow you to attribute conversions back to your ad campaigns to understand their true impact, create Pixel custom audiences and lookalike audiences based on the specific actions that Snapchatters have taken while visiting your site. Use real-time insights to optimize delivery of your campaigns for results that matter most to your business. And unlock powerful new features such as dynamic product ads. To get the most out of your Snap Pixel setup, there are two important questions that you should consider. What events do I need to pass? The events that you should pass depend on your business use case. For example, a blog site may benefit most from sign-up events so that they can optimize for signups. An online retailer may benefit the most from a combination of page view, sign up, add cart, and purchase events so that they can optimize for purchases and effectively leverage dynamic product ads. What parameters do I need to pass to each event? User parameters are always required as they are the only way to properly attribute an event. Additional parameters are covered in more detail later in this video, but consider the use of each parameter and pick those that may be most beneficial for your business. Before we get started, let's cover a prerequisite. This tutorial assumes that you've created a Snapchat ad account. If you still need to set one up, please refer to the link on the screen and then come back to this video. First, let's create a Snap Pixel by going to Ads Manager, selecting Pixels, and then selecting Create Pixel. Enter your pixel name, and then click Create. Under the Ad Accounts dropdown, let's select our ad account. Next, click Setup Pixel. If you are on the Events Manager screen, then select New Event Source, and then select Web. First, select the Partner Integration tile and check to see if you're using any of the Snap integration partners on your website, such as Shopify. If you are, then select the respective tile and follow the simplified setup instructions. If you're not using any of the listed partners on your website, then select Cancel, select Setup Pixel, and select Pixel Code. Ensure that Enable Automated Matching is turned on. This feature will allow your Snap Pixel to automatically attempt to detect and send Snap information about your customers. Keep in mind that we will hash information that we believe to be emails or phone numbers before they're sent to Snap in order to help protect user privacy. Now, hover over the code provided in step two and click it to copy it to your clipboard. Next, we're gonna to go to our website's head tag and paste the Snap Pixel code in. For now, we're not gonna worry about this user email parameter. However, one important thing to note is that you must put this pixel code in the head tag of every page that you intend to track. Before we move on, let's install the Snap Pixel helper so that we can test our events. We'll go to the Chrome Web Store. We'll search Snap Pixel helper. Select Snap Pixel Helper and select Add to Chrome and then Add Extension. Additionally, please make sure your ad blocker is turned off for your website. Before we move on, let's validate that our page view event is firing properly. On our website, we'll notice that there's a red badge with the number one in it on the Snap Pixel Helper icon. This indicates that the pixel received one event, but there was an issue with it. Let's go ahead and click on the icon. Great, so we noticed that it did receive our page view event. However, if we expand it, we'll notice that it states the email hash is known to be associated with an invalid value. This is due to the email parameter that we mentioned earlier in the video, and we'll work on this next. If the pixel is not firing, you will see a black and white icon with no badge. First, make sure that your ad blocker is disabled, and if the issue persists, double check your setup. Next, we're going to start sending proper user email and user phone number parameters with our page view events, as these are high priority parameters for matching an attribution. First, we're going to add a script tag prior to our snap pixel script tag that adds two functions, one for normalizing email and one for normalizing phone, according to snap pixel documentation. Now we can use these two functions to normalize a user email and phone number and then pass them to our initialization function call. 
and then we'll just add user phone number like so. It's important to note that the SnapPixel SDK will automatically hash these values before firing the event. However, you could choose to manually hash them yourselves. If you choose to do so, be sure to pass the hashed values in the appropriate fields, such as user hashed email and user hashed phone number. This ensures that the information is not hashed twice. Additionally, it's important to remember that you must always normalize the fields prior to hashing them or prior to passing them to the SnapPixel SDK. This ensures that Snap can effectively match the parameters. To verify that the SnapPixel is receiving our newly provided user parameters, let's run another test. So we'll jump back on our website, and again, we should see a green badge on the SnapPixel helper icon. We'll click that. And great, we can see that we now have an email hash parameter and a phone number hash parameter. However, before we consider this test a success, let's ensure that we're correctly hashing the parameters. We'll do this by going to the hash calculator and typing in the value that we are hashing after normalization. So we know that our email looks like test at snap.com. Go ahead and copy that. And I'll just bring it over to my code editor and paste in the calculated value. We'll go back to our event, copy the email hash, and paste it right below it. And fantastic, they match. So that, that is being hashed properly. Let's do the same thing for phone number. So we'll paste in our phone number. But again, after normalization, it looks like this. And we'll copy the hash. Paste it here. And then go back, copy the hash from the event, paste it, and those match as well. So fantastic. We know that we are now sending the correctly hashed user parameters. As mentioned during the introduction, you'll likely benefit from passing additional events depending on your use case. Let's run through an example of passing a purchase event so that we can optimize for pixel purchases. Be sure to pass purchase events on a web page only once per purchase. This helps to avoid duplicate reporting and ensure that your conversion, sales, and ROAS numbers are accurate. One way to track our purchase event would be to fire the track call from directly within the on-click attribute of our purchase button. However, let's create a separate function and call that function whenever our button is clicked. Let's click our purchase button. And we should now see the number two in the green badge on the Snap Pixel helper icon. This indicates that the Pixel has fired two events. Let's click it. Awesome. We see that the Snap Pixel has fired our purchase event with all the relevant metadata. Finally, let's run through an example of how you might pass add to cart and sign up events. For add to cart, let's add another function on click add to cart. You'll notice that it's very similar to our on-click purchase function, except for it doesn't have a transaction ID because a purchase hasn't actually been made. And now similarly to on-click purchase, we will come down and add it to the on-click attribute of our add to cart button. For sign up, notice that we're on a new sign up page. However, we've got the same initial tracking code that we had on our index. Again, it's important to ensure that the tracking code is placed on each web page that you want to track. For our signup event, we'll create a function to trigger whenever our signup form is submitted. And now we'll create a form that triggers our submit signup method when the form is submitted. Let's dive into verification with the Pixel Helper tool a bit more. As mentioned previously, if you see a red badge on the Snap Pixel Helper icon, then there may be an error with your Pixel implementation. If we click on the Snap Pixel Helper icon and expand the event with red text, then we'll be able to see the specific error message. Let's cover some common Pixel errors and how you might fix them. If you see invalid event type with the event name, double check that the events you're trying to track come from the list of standard accepted events. If you see an error referring to an invalid hash value, double check that the value being hashed is correct. For example, you may see invalid email hash if we recognize a known placeholder email. Additionally, double check that the value has been correctly hashed per our guidance. 
As a final verification step, we can use the event test tool in Snapchat Events Manager to fully verify our integration. So let's go to Events Manager. We'll click on the Test Events button. We'll select our pixel for the data source, and we'll enter our website URL, and finally click Open Website. We'll trigger a few events, and then we'll head back to Events Manager to see the events that were picked up. So we viewed the page once, and I clicked Purchase three times. We can also view the metadata that was received with each event.